So there is a reason that remote jobs are conventionally harder to get from India. The stacks are aligned against you. You could be extremely good in your skills, yet not be able to find that interview. If you're able to find that interview, there could be 10 other things that are stacked against you because you're an engineer from India. In this video, I'll talk about some of these red flags. What are these things to avoid once you get an interview and what to do if you're trying your best to get an interview but not landing one. With that context, let's get right into the video. To preface, why would you want a remote job over an on-office job? And I think it comes down to three factors, especially if you're looking for a US-based remote job. Number one, you're trying to find an offer that pays you more than 100K. Pretty much an offer that doesn't consider the fact that you're in India and your expenses are low and is purely based on skill. Number two, staying close to your family, staying back home, which sounds like a pretty good reason. And number three, there is a perception that if you work in a US-based remote job, there is a high probability of your technical growth to be much higher. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think there are great companies in India where your learning curve could be really high. But usually when you're working in a remote job, um, it's a very small team working on an extremely challenging problem. So there is a high probability of your learning curve to be really high. I think all three of these are pretty decent reasons for you to want a remote job. But the problem that I've seen in most people is you're not able to find that interview. I think that's the biggest place where a disconnect happens or you don't have the right skills, in which case, you know, even if you get an interview, nothing good is going to happen. So step number one is being extremely confident in your skills, making sure you know more than enough about a specific stack. What is the best way to ensure you know more than enough about a specific stack? contribute to an open source project in that specific stack. A common question I get from time to time is, Harkirat, I have done X, Y, and Z. Is this enough for me to apply for a remote job? And the answer is, you shouldn't be looking at a certain metric, I have done X, Y, and Z, and now I should apply. I think you should be constantly contributing, constantly learning. And at some point, you'll have enough skills and enough proof of work. Okay, randomly, when you open the jobs portal and you look at the requirements, most of the things that are mentioned there, you know. This isn't a race to find the perfect stack, watch a bunch of videos on it and apply for a job. This is a race to acquire enough skills to build products and then build a lot of them by yourself or by contributing to other people. At some point, if you're lucky, you get an interview. If not, you're contributing, you can always get a standard job. The one thing I've seen in most people who do end up getting a remote job is, they're not really wanting an interview today. Even if they feel like they have the right skills, they understand this is a process and are willing to hustle through a few months until they get that first interview. Now, let's say you have the right skills. You've been contributing a while and you get that interview. The reason this path is so clear in my head is because I've seen too many people now who are first learning, then contributing, and then at some point are getting connected. This isn't rocket science, really. I think the only thing is not having wrong expectations. Okay, you are watching a few videos and covering a few stack is enough to grab an interview. Even if you get that interview, there's a high probability you'll fail. Given part one and two are sorted, you have the skills, you got the interview. I'm going to cover a few points, which is pretty much my rant anytime a student from the cohort is going for an interview. These are the points that I cover, which are mild yellow slash red flags and can lead to you having the skills and having the right opportunity yet not getting selected. So please, if you do reach the stage of an interview, keep these things in mind and you know, be pre-prepared with all of these points. Number one, just assume they already have a bias. If you hire someone from another developing nation, let's say, I don't know, Bangladesh, you will have some sort of a bias in your head, be it, you know, their accent, be it their background, be it their video camera. Whenever someone's hopping on a call and they know the engineer is from India, they will have some sort of a bias you need to clear as much of that bias as you can. How can you do it? Please get a decent camera. I think if you have an interview, there is enough upside for you to invest in a very decent camera. I'll post one in the description. Make sure you have an HD camera, make sure you have a decent mic, probably more than decent mic, and a very decent background. Don't have curtains lingering around. Don't make it obvious that you're sitting in your, in your hometown home. If possible, just get a basic white background and just sit there. Amongst all three of these, mic is super important. They can ignore the background. They can ignore the video. Ideally, they can't ignore the video either. But let's say they do ignore the first two. There is a very big accent gap here. Getting a good mic can help them comprehend you better, which is one of the first thing they look at. A lot of times I'm seeing the first interview is just to test, okay, is this person able to communicate well? And over there, mic matters a lot. What is the second thing that matters? Which takes us to point two, your English. This isn't something you can prepare in one day, uh, but generally, if this is the trajectory you do think of taking, if you want to, you know, work with people who are not from India, you have to be more than decent in English. Um, this happens over time. This is one place where, you know, the rich keep on getting richer. As soon as you get your first remote job, and let's say you spend a year working with people from the US, you will get a little bit of an accent. You will know how to 
you will know how to communicate after that um but until that happens watch a lot of movies talk to your friends with english all that jazz i mean you get the idea make sure that during that interview it doesn't feel like you're fumbling as i said a lot of times the first question is how are their communication skills so make sure you know they're decent and this is something that happens over time so if you're targeting a remote job in the next 6 months make sure of the next 6 months you're able to communicate maybe half as well as i'm communicating right now it, this is a big factor you could be the best engineer but if you cannot communicate unfortunately they will decide to not hire you this happened with me very first hand i was working at a very big company a billion dollar company had an interview with a chinese guy and usually in big companies the interviewers are told ki you are not supposed to have any bias but unfortunately you know this was something i told my manager here it will be very hard to communicate my manager agreed okay yes doesn't matter we're not having a bias here it comes down to him eventually working with us and you know not being able to communicate so make sure if you're thinking of going down this path generally no downside in learning english and learning to communicate well in english maybe you know tone down a little bit of the indian accent try to at least during those conversations bring up a little bit of the american accent it helps it's a little more polite but yeah that's pretty much it keep your english up to date next up you'll be a contractor don't fight it if they ask you how would you like to join just give them a choice i'm happy either way but most probably you'll get hired as a contractor there are no downsides to it there are only upsides a contractor basically means you're not officially a full time employee which is fine um the only downside there is you don't get insurance which insurance is very cheap in india you can just buy it yourself um don't have any sort of a trauma that you are a remote contractor it's totally fine doesn't matter the money hits the bank either way harkirat being a remote contractor does it mean it's easier for them to fire me uh, versus me being a full time employee technically yes but you are in a remote job uh, two things happen when you're in a remote job number one if you got a remote job from india there's a very high probability that you're the one who leaves the company and don't get laid off number two it does not matter if they have to fire you they'll fire you as a full time employee as well there is no downside to it don't fight you know um trying to get an employee status a contractor is great especially great for taxes next up salary negotiation i've said this many times i will say this again the person who wins in a negotiation is the person who's able to leave the table so it purely depends on you do you have another offer are you currently in a cushy job then yes you can negotiate if you have no offers i'll put a screenshot here somewhere someone from the cohort asks harkirat the job expectations here are 42k to 60k should i ask for 30k i said ask for 40k he said no yaar I want a job as soon as possible. I'm not taking any risk. I'll just ask for 30k US dollars. So there's a high probability he would have gotten in for 40k as well. But in the end, right now he doesn't have a job. He desperately needs one. So he's okay underpricing. I think generally this is a great strategy for your first offer. Underprice. The odds are stacked against you. This gives you a very big upside. Of course, don't put like some dumb five thousand dollars a year kind of a number. Have a decentish number, but nothing too out of the ordinary for your first offer. But again, this depends on your stage. It depends on whether or not you need the offer and how desperately you need it. If you do, there's nothing much you can do. The advice here is standard, irrespective of if you're in a remote job or not. Lastly, one more you know big pitfall I've seen people do is use sir, ma'am, please in a conversation. If you're approaching someone, try to approach them with some confidence and you know some dignity. There is no point asking someone for a free job. Trust me, as a CTO, I don't want people who are asking for a free job. It probably just means you don't know enough coding and you know you're going to be a headache once you join. So try to get rid of the whole sir, please give me a job. I'll work for free for learning and experience. Um, it actually overshadows a lot of other people. If a lot of people from India, you know, approach people. like this it will be harder for the right candidates to reach there so you know approach them with confidence if you know something as i said first focus on your skills if you have the right skills you can always approach with confidence that hey, i can provide you value in xyz way by charging you much lesser than a us counterpart don't say us counterpart say my salary expectations are whatever 40k us dollars um and then if you get an interview great if not underpricing the out of yourself or pleading or calling them sir is not going to help so you know talk like you're talking to a friend and that usually works there's no upside of you know using sir ma'am or pleading in any form or fashion uh, i think companies are pretty professional you should be the same i think one more point this brings me to is ke, you know don't approach until you reach a certain skill level uh, because as i said you know it will just clutter the market so much ke ha indian devs to just approach too much in dms so make sure you reach the right right skills and then you know approach humbly uh, at some point if you have the right skills i think it becomes a question of when and not if you get a whatever could be a remote job could be an on site job could be i want to do my own thing uh, having the right skills is the most underrated thing i keep saying skills again and again basically means you know whatever technology builds products if today money is being made via minting nfts if you understand how to mint nfts or write that code you will be popular in the market similarly find products that make money thankfully tech grew so quickly all of the world is on a mobile phone right now so there are products that make money figure out what those products are 
figure out what is the tech behind them try to learn that tech and then you know at some point you'll be able to get into one of these companies is my belief it could also totally happen ki you learn all the right skills and never get a remote job a lot of my friends are extremely smart and work at google there is no downside to an on site job getting a remote job becomes a combination of having skills and hustling really hard for a long time and you know being okay with failure um because a lot of times you're approaching and getting rejected if you have fear of being rejected then a remote job or trying for a remote job is probably not going to have very big outcomes for you lastly i'll say this getting the first remote offer is actually the most difficult thing usually it's a flywheel from there you either i've seen indians perform like overperform for some reason once they get a job probably you know because of security you also see there's a very big upside you know you join at a very 30k us dollar salary you see all your peers are making 100k you're providing more value than them so you know you see that growth that can happen very quickly initially abhishek is a very good example of this you know he was referred initially they've had their qualms but is now one of the biggest performers in that company um i've seen this very commonly in my jobs in other people that i'm referring um thankfully you know the bar is very low uh, and not because people in the us don't work because people in india work thoda jyada hi ke because of whatever reason you know we've been sort of ingrained to do that uh, since iit je days so getting the first one is the most difficult one uske baad i have usually seen you are the one who leaves for a better opportunity and you know rarely do you get laid off uh, if you want to stay in a company until you can can do that if you want to keep having outsized outcomes or you know approach bigger markets or fancier markets then you can always hop from one place to another but yeah the most in- anxiety inducing phase the most uh, you know why nothing would happening to me phase happens until you get that first offer so aim there to quickly recap what do you have to do number 1 until you have the right set of skills don't do anything just gain those skills make sure you're able to contribute to other people's project create your own projects and you like the process of you know doing this you're not doing it just to get a job then approach people aggressively uh, could be on twitter linkedin usually twitter is the best spot to find that sweet company who's looking for an engineer and doesn't have the right money has just raised a seed round so would be more than happy if they get like a decent ish or a founding engineer for 30 40 50 k us dollars once you reach the interview stage make sure you have the standards sorted make sure you have the right camera mic you're decent in english and you're able to communicate well not pleading at any point and lastly once you get a job i mean i think that journey is yours to take from there i don't think any advice i give will be super helpful there uh, purely depends on you how complacent you want to be or you know how much you like the company how much your equity grows uh, and you can decide whether or not you want to stay or go for a different one With that I think that's a lot of gyan for today so let's send it I'll see you guys in the next one bye bye